Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. And today I'm going to detail for you how niacin supports the dynamic metabolism, especially as we grow older. Autophagy is the metabolic process by which our cells cleanse themselves of toxins and other metabolic waste. Like everything else in the body, autophagy declines steeply as we grow older, and this less than optimal autophagy is absolutely an accelerant for the aging process. As we know, one major cause of aging is a sharp increase in reactive oxygen species and overall oxidative damage. While regular consumption of antioxidant-rich foods and critical antioxidant supplements like vitamin C, PQQ, and even proteolytic enzymes are all helpful, maintaining autophagy is really the best defense against the accumulation of defective mitochondria. And one timeless way to instigate autophagy is through calorie restriction, because when our food supply runs short, our cells begin digesting their metabolic waste, much of which is protein-based, to ensure survival. To put it another way, if you live a sedentary lifestyle, never fast, and are continuously eating and gaining weight, then your cells never have a chance to properly detox themselves. So how does niacin, and specifically original flushing niacin, which is also known as vitamin B3, fit into this equation? Most ingested niacin is used to manufacture NAD, or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, the critical coenzyme that, among countless other duties, is the primary fuel source for sirtuins, which are the metabolic proteins that repair DNA, mitochondria, telomeres, and keep overall physiology in prime condition. One particular sirtuin, known simply as sirtuin-1, is actually dependent on sufficient NAD production, which again originates from niacin, to function optimally. Chronic inflammation is an unfortunate component of aging that certainly affects metabolism and overall homeostasis. Even in healthy, older individuals, there's usually an increase in inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and also inflammatory cytokines. Such age-related elevation of these inflammatory markers is also closely associated with insulin resistance. Extreme energy limitation, something our Paleolithic ancestors experienced almost daily because of frequent food shortages, is now known to increase sirtuin numbers and activity. And today, in a world of excessively available dietary energy, we activate this protective process through fasting and caloric restriction. Sirtuin-1, which again requires NAD for its enzymatic activity, is critical for maintaining proper insulin sensitivity, insulin secretion, and the overall effects of calorie restriction. As just one example, in the liver, a deficiency of sirtuin-1 can lead to chronic hyperglycemia, or high blood sugar, oxidative stress, and systemic insulin resistance, even with what we would consider a healthy, normal, balanced diet. In our fat tissue, adequate sirtuin-1 is a contributing cofactor that converts our stubborn, long-term storage white fat into metabolically active brown fat that is itself so central to, to optimal metabolism. Even in our skeletal muscles, caloric restriction increases sirtuin-1 activity and enhances insulin sensitivity and glucose uptake. Again, none of these amazing benefits are possible with, without sirtuin-1, and sirtuin-1 is dependent on the NAD the regular intake of niacin provides. So how does this relate to autophagy? Sirtuin-1 activates AMPK, our metabolic master switch enzyme, which is well known for burning fat, reducing blood glucose levels, and boosting overall metabolism. And low AMPK activity, which happens as we age, is one reason some people struggle to lose weight. Regular exercise is also an important part of this, as exercise is already well known to optimize metabolism, but specific to niacin, the insulin sensitizing effect of exercise is important because niacin can partially block the effect of insulin, and in someone who does not exercise regularly, this blockage effect can lead to insulin resistance. So please stay active. I've told you before that the best results with niacin are seen with consistent, ongoing use. You do want to start your niacin journey with a low dose, like anywhere from 25 to 100 milligrams, because of the famous niacin flush, which looks like a systemic rash and feels like a severe itch. 
food is really the best buffer for niacin, so try taking niacin every time you eat a meal. After a few weeks of continuous use, you will grow accustomed to the dose you're taking, and when this happens, you will no longer flush at this particular dose. Then, at this time, you can step it up to a higher dose if you're comfortable with that, but do it slowly and gradually. Take your time. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.